Jorakuji, the temple of everlasting peace. So you climb the stairs to get to temple 14, Jorakuji. Uh, and it's a really interesting temple in the terms of its layout. Uh, Kobodaishi was said to be known for his faith in the Miroka Miroku or Maitre Maitreya Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva Buddha of the future. And uh, he, the Miroku, uh, revealed himself here to Kobodaishi, who then carved a two foot, six inch uh, sculpt, uh, figure of him, which is housed in this uh, main temple. Uh, the image has escaped periodic fires and is known for its miraculous powers. This is the only temple along the pilgrimage route dedicated to uh, the Miroku Bosatsu. Uh, as you come up, there's a, a little memorial of some sort, a place to wash your hands, a bell, so don't forget to ring the bell on the way in, not on the way out. What makes this temple so interesting is this kind of lunar landscape that you approach on. So I'm kind of curious how bus tours with elderly deal with this because it is fairly difficult to uh, walk up. And this is the Daishi Do uh, over here. And I almost tripped there. And this is the Hondo. So this temple has, uh, through the ages, been repeatedly patronized by emperors. Uh, this yew tree, it said that if you boil a tea from the leaves of this tree, it could cure yourself of diabetes. Uh, so this is the hondo with the image of the future Buddha housed inside. There's one other interesting legend associated with this temple, and that is that a a woman carried, a wife carried her disabled husband around the pilgrimage uh, six times. And it's actually on the sixth circuit that her and her husband swore that if he wasn't healed, that they would commit suicide. And it was here at this temple. I'm not sure if it was at this temple since the temple moved to this location in 1818, but it was at uh, Jorakuji that Kobodaishi healed her husband and they were able to finish the pilgrimage uh, together. Jorakuji, the temple of everlasting peace, and the temple with the interesting lunar landscape.